Hey guys, iOS 13.2 developer beta one is here. Always exciting to see a big release like this, a significant amount of changes in this one, including deep fusion, where you combine all three lenses into the perfect crisp image on the 11 and 11 pro series. We'll be taking a look at that. And also the biggest revelation in this update is a glyph that's revealed the new AirPods three or AirPods pro. This was found in the accessibility live listen settings of iOS 13.2. And there's this glyph right here that's very reminiscent of the AirPods 3 case prototype leak that I was showing you in the video earlier. Actually almost looks identical to it, very short stem. We'll have a concept and model out on this fairly soon, but it's just very interesting that things keep leaking in iOS betas. Also alongside that new icon, there's direct reference to a new focus mode, a capability coming to these new AirPods, which would essentially combine listening mode plus the new in-ear noise cancellation. And there's a new icon for it as well. So very exciting to see these changes. I hope to see these new headphones in October. And also developer Rambo found that Apple updated the glyphs of the rotating devices in that little pop-up menu meaning it could eventually support dark mode. Since they're cut out now, Apple could change the background color in case you're in dark mode and have that adjust accordingly. Like that concept I showed you earlier would be pretty dang interesting. Now, the biggest change coming to iOS 13.2 is Deep Fusion. It's not a setting that you can change. It's not one that you can enable or disable. There's no icon for it. The Verge reports that it's all happening in the background. Apple wanted it to be seamless where you can't see anything happening. Essentially, it's just taking all of the camera data from all three lenses, combining them into one super sharp, crisp image. And the early results are basically saying it's working. It's not very noticeable until you zoom in, but things are sharper. In particular, textures like sweaters, t-shirts, fabrics. And in my testing, I didn't really see much of a difference, but on the outer edges in ultra wide mode, things do appear sharper as it's combining the data from the other sensors, which don't have the aberration on the sides. So I was very happy to see that it is a slight improvement. And another major change, unclear if it's been enabled in this beta, but will ship in 13.2, is the ability to use third-party messaging applications with Siri. So she'll be able to quick reply and read you messages from a third-party app. Apple has relaxed their restrictions on that, and we should be seeing this ship in the final version of 13.2. Okay, and let's get to all of those other changes. So after updating, I had a dedicated software update complete screen. And this is new for me. Usually it's a tiny little bar in the notification center. And the splash screens and menus in setup all had larger, bolder text towards the bottom. And Apple continues to refine the volume HUD animation. Now there's this new slink away animation. Before it did not exist, kind of just popped away. Now it has an actual slick new animation, which is very cool. And the actual amount of time that it stays up on screen is shorter. So you don't have to wait as long for that to stop disturbing your content. And one more thing is no matter what you're connected to, it will no longer say that device on the bottom. So speaker is no longer listed in this example, or if you're connected to AirPods, it just shows the glyph there and not the actual text. A number of changes in the control center. The volume platter now features a larger, bolder volume icon. And when you haptic touch inside, there's no longer an iPhone icon up top. It's replaced with the volume icon, which doesn't work as well. The animations are very delayed. So over here, they're instant and responsive. I'd like to see that fixed, but overall cleaner, I guess. And a very cool one now is your connected devices will show their icon glyph in that volume slider. So you no longer have to jump inside to see what you're connected to. A very easy way to tell. I love it. These subtle little refinements are what make Apple so special to me. Also, when you're actually in the connections menu and you want to connect with another device with share audio, and I go ahead and present this one here. Now notice that the interface is rotating. It's a mini version of the pop-up window, whereas before the interface looked like this, just a static image of the device. So that's a very nice touch also presented in 13.2. And if you are sharing audio, the little badge representing that is gone, instead replaced with one built into the volume HUD and the volume slider now no longer has the volume icons there as well. So matching the rest of the interface, very cool. As always, the newer version is on the right here, 13.2. And when 3D touching or haptic touching on folders now, there's a new icon for rename. It's just a little pencil, not inside a little letter box. And also over here, notice that icons with very long names have been shortened, abbreviated there, so you can't see the rest. It looked a little bit strange. For example, Geekbench 5 Pro had this very long title now that's been abbreviated. So a couple things when you're in the edit mode here, dragging apps around, the done button is now solidified in gray. 
not so transparent. I'm not sure I like that change. And one more thing that's very apparent on the 11 Pro is when you take an app to drag it, there's a lag that happens in the first few seconds of dragging it, then it goes away. Now that no longer happens on the latest beta, smooth all the way around. Now with screen time, when you reach your time limit on a certain app, there's a new styling for the OK button. Looks much better. When editing in the widgets page, the icons now are much bolder, bigger, easier to see. And on the very bottom, when you scroll all the way up, you have a little bit more room now. Everything's not crammed towards the bottom. And several changes in the music app. In the now playing page with dark mode enabled, Apple has lightened the background interface. It's no longer a true black. It's a few shades brighter, easier to discern your controls. And now in the next up page, scroll down and there's a history section. So you can check out what you just listened to, go back to it without having to guess. And another great thing here is the shuffle and repeat buttons have a border. So they're easier to see where previously they just lit up. Very much appreciated visual changes. In the TV app, there's a new 3D touch or haptic touch interface here. It's much cleaner, see your content and have these options here instead of going to a separate page. A nice visual change in the Photos app, scroll all the way to the top of all of your photos and Apple gives you some breathing room up top now instead of overlaying the text on your actual photos, making it very hard to see the upper ones. And now in the AirDrop menu, there's a slight interface change. So for devices with the U1 chip, the arrow is now bolder, thicker, so just slightly easier to see. Another big feature that's finally been reintroduced with iOS 13.2 is announced messages with Siri, where your incoming messages will be announced through AirPods 2 or other Beats headphones. And now in notification settings or Siri settings, you now have the option to re-enable that and start using it. In the privacy settings, there's a new tab for research. This is for research kit. It requires an app. At the moment, there is really nothing to download, but you do have this little explainer here. And also within the privacy settings, analytics are now analytics and improvements. And within the general settings, previously AirPlay is now AirPlay and handoff, and inside a couple new options. You now have the option to automatically AirPlay to TVs, no questions asked, or if you do want questions asked, there's that option there. And also continuity with HomePod right here via transfer to HomePod is here. Apparently it doesn't work just yet, but Apple will enable it in the future. And when selecting a wallpaper, now towards the bottom, there's actual explainer text for this middle button, perspective zoom on and off. So it'll actually let you know what it does. And in live wallpaper, when you haptic or 3D touch on the screen, the text disappears faster so you can see the content sooner. And there's been an issue with the wallpapers where they would be very faded for no reason whatsoever. You'd have to restart to fix it. And that's been fixed in iOS 13.2. In accessibility settings on the 11 and 11 Pro series, haptic touch previously was just haptic touch. Now it's 3D and haptic touch and has a new description. In notes, you no longer have the option to show or hide link previews. By default, you're gonna get the link preview there and it fills the screen, it looks good. Just strange why Apple would remove that. Also a visual change in Safari when in the tab view, the background is no longer a blurred, darkened version of your iPhone wallpaper. It's just dark, almost black. So an interesting visual change in Safari. In shortcuts, there is a visual change for ask each time. It's now bigger with a little icon next to it. And you can now share shortcuts. So if you wanted to share with another phone, another device, you can send that. And the app drawer within shortcuts can now be closed just by swiping previously. All you get is that you'd have to go up and then swipe down. And the edit name and photo prompt in messages is now a little bit more incessant. It'll actually describe why you need to do this before you can close it off. And for HomeKit accessories that can come paired with certain sensors or other products, you now have an option to separate those into different tiles within the Home app. In the Watch app, Apple has updated it visually slightly with better positioning. And the Apple Watches shown are now Series 5s, at least the watch faces. Same in the App Store section, just some slight visual rearrangements. And Apple's actually added four new gradient types to the gradient watch face if you're updated on watchOS 6.1 beta 2. So you'll see four new ones here. A couple things on the iPad also. So if you were previously using an app in multi-windowed view, so two windows for the same app, and then you bring it over and slide over, you have this new interface where you can close one of those windows and just enter one. Very nice. Also within settings, display and brightness previously had the home screen and dock section built into it, but Apple has separated those, making it easier to control how your iPad looks on the home screen. This is controlling the app icon size. I don't like the clutter, but for people that didn't know that existed, it's a nice change. And in the CarPlay view on 13.2 here on the bottom, the background is blurred more aggressively and it's brighter. So easier to see your controls and 
discern text against it. And here's a Geekbench 5 Pro results. I'm not sure if this says anything, but multi-core score is modestly improved, single core just about the same. The performance still feels great. I actually updated on my personal device to 13.2, and I'll be beta testing the watchOS 6.1 beta as well. Haven't seen anything wrong with it in a few hours of using it, although it is a beta, so do proceed with caution. Otherwise, there it is, a pretty significant upgrade. I love all those little quality of life, little tiny improvements that Apple's been doing with the volume HUD and the control center. It's great. They're making the best iPhone even more enjoyable. Thanks for watching, guys. Stay tuned for more. Peace.